With nearly 300,000 views, my review of some TP-Link Powerline network adapters is by far the most popular videos on my channel. However, it has led to quite a lot of comments and various feedback, so in this video I'm going to try and aim to answer some of the questions that have been raised about Powerline adapters. So, first things first, how reliable are they? Well, I've had a pair of Powerline adapters running in my house for more than two years without needing to restart them or change their configuration in any way. Their links just remained rock solid and had absolutely no problems whatsoever. So the reliability can be very good. Next up, do they work on power strips, including surge protectors? Well, yes, they do. I showed them running in a video on a power strip. They do work fine, although if you're using surge protectors, there may be a reasonable performance effect due to the filtering that surge protectors have. Although I personally didn't actually notice that much of a difference between having the power line adapters mounted straight on the wall and being mounted on a long surge protected power strip, although your mileage may vary a little bit, especially dependent on your house wiring and the general RF conditions. Are they better than Wi-Fi repeaters? Now, I've done a few videos on this, or maybe just one video, and generally I do find they are better than Wi-Fi repeaters because to get optimum performance from a Wi-Fi repeater, the repeater needs to be close to the router whose signal you want to repeat, and it's also going to be close to the device that needs the signal improving for. And in many situations, that's actually quite hard to put it in, in that optimal position. Powerline adapters, meanwhile, use the home wiring, so to a certain extent do not suffer with such a problem if for example there is thick stone walls between the repeat and the router and the repeater and the target device and this is why when i'm helping people with their home networking i tend to use power line adapters rather than wi-fi repeaters wi-fi repeaters also as they sit on the band they're listening and repeating on they can kind of interfere with themselves and introduce sort of if you like so almost spectral congestion. So even in very good signal environments, the speed you get from the even with the latest AC ones is generally not that brilliant. And I found even legacy power line adapters can actually do better in some situations. And then one of the really big sort of elephant in the room with the comments is regarding my use of network file copy to measure the device performance. Now this is a fairly standardised way of measuring device performance, but every people, a lot of people have been saying, oh, you should use speedtest.net. Well, there are a number of reasons why you should not use internet speed test sites to measure the performance of network performance, especially with high speed devices. So for example, if the broadband line coming into your house or business is only 10 meg per second, and you've got 10,000 meg network hardware, so 10 gig network hardware, then you know, you're know you not going to get speed higher than 10 meg per second no matter how hard you try on an internet speed test because the limiting factor is the broadband line. And even if you have got a very fast broadband line coming into your property, the internet suffers with things like congestion, general internet congestion as well as with local network congestion, line faults, bit errors, all sorts of things that will affect the results. Copying from a local source that has more than adequate capacity to cope with the tested device is really the only way to get reliable, accurate, consistent and precise results. However, trying to explain this to people, especially when a lot of the reviews on the internet just use speedtest.net, pre presumably they were using really high and least lines and stuff which have guaranteed bandwidth running at one gigabit or more to meet the capacity of the product. Oh, well, no, of course they don't. but it's I guess it's a little bit of an understanding gap in some cases but yeah you can't really use speedtest.net to measure local network device performance even although having said that I mean obviously if you've got a very slow Wi-Fi network and a fast home broadband connection and you use power line adapters the speedtest.net speed will increase just as a sort of professional way of measuring a device's performance is not great unless you have a perfect line to the internet and a test server on the internet. And frankly, doing it that way is very similar to just copying off a local server. How much power do power line adapters use? 
Well, with the eco saving and power save properties of them, so when not most data is being transported, they kind of idle. The simple answer is very little. I mean, I haven't measured it specifically because the load is so low that accurately measuring it with a lot of apparatus is not that reliable. But it's certainly less than about 10, 10 watt per adapter. And certainly we've had four in the house running sort of minimum most of the time. And certainly our power bill has not changed at all. So my review has been up for a couple of years now. So I've had queries about which power line adapters would you recommend now. So the AV500 PA411 adapters that I use in the video are still, like I said, performing great here. So in many situations, they are very good and are probably by far the best value option. However, there are sort of higher home plug standards now. So you've got like AV1200 and 2000. Now the performance benefit that people get from using these is not always that significant because sort of the higher the speed of the adapter, the more they're reliant on home wiring. So certainly if your home wiring is good and you live in a modern house, you want every little bit of bandwidth, aiming for like an AV1200 product is probably the best thing. However, I would not necessarily say go for the 2000s because to actually see much benefit, you need to have perfect wiring. And even then, actually the added performance benefit from what I've seen is actually not that significant. And finally, something of a biggie. Do the power line adapters work across multiple domestic circuits? Now, on the instruction manuals and on the boxes, they generally say no, they don't. However, I've had no problems running these across, potentially like from one circuit to like a completely different circuit in the house. As long as they are all within your house, then they seem to just work, certainly in my situation, although I've heard cases when they don't. So certainly if you have the ability to try power line adapters in your house before buying them, or have a retailer with a good re ret returns policy, I would try them in your house amongst d the different circuits, different circuit breakers, but I'm not going to sort of stand here and guarantee that they will work, because certain like circuit breakers and the way certain houses are wired may make power adapters sort of totally ineffective in that situation. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video about some frequently asked questions I've got from people about power line adapters and I shall see you on the next video. Um, thanks for watching.